Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Ayers. I'm the senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard newspaper in Woodstock. And I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Legislative Update with Representative Tesha Buss of Woodstock, uh, also represents Reading and Plymouth in the Vermont State Legislature. Uh, hello, Tesha. How are you this week? I'm wonderful, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. It's great to, great to be back with you this week. Uh, we, I'd like to talk this week a little bit about um, your involvement with rural issues here in Vermont. I know from past conversation, you're a member of the of the Rural Caucus. Uh, can you tell, tell uh, our viewers a little bit of what the R Rural Caucus is all about and what some of the issues are that you address? Sure. You know, at the legislature, most of our work happens in committee. So I'm on the education committee, but I obviously have uh, ideas and concerns from constituents that need to be addressed as well that have nothing to do with education. So the caucuses are based on issues. There are many different types, but the Rural Caucus was important to me because we're in rural Vermont. So the Rural Caucus focuses on all issues um, for getting municipalities the support that they need to redo bylaws, um, energy efficiency grants for municipal buildings. Um, we, we work with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, our regional planning commissions. Um, so any issue that that affects rural Vermont, we work with those different interest groups to try to help. I see. And I would assume some of the some of those major issues might include things like broadband access, maybe land, land use planning, those kinds of things, which are issues that we hear about uh, perpetually each legislative session. Would that be accurate? That is absolutely accurate. And, you know, um, FX Flynn, who helped to create EC Fiber, was really a founder of broadband getting throughout the entire state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. Now we have communication union districts. They call them CUDs. Yes. Um, they're now everywhere. And that's a model that FX works really hard to, to create. And I'm really happy that we just passed the Budget Adjustment Act. So at the end of every session, we pass the budget. But in the middle of the year, we have to true up, you know, where we may have spent too much money, where we may need a little bit more money. And we just passed the amount of money that we need to match the federal dollar so that we can draw the maximum amount down. Absolutely. And I believe that's I, I've written pretty extensively about that issue and about the whole uh, issue of broadband access in the Upper Valley. And I believe that's a 30 million dollar uh, 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 allotment from the budget adjustment process that will go towards that grant. And uh, fingers crossed, we hope that the State Broadband Council will uh, hear favorably about that grant. I, I talked with uh, Christine uh, Hallsmith there, and uh, I believe it's going to be uh, March when that final decision will be made. That's going to enable, uh, help enable the extension of 1,600 miles of fiber optic, um, fiber, fiber optic cable service to the most rural pockets of Vermont. So that's uh, that's great news. Uh, I'll look forward to sharing that with uh, viewers and, and, and our readers at The Standard. Uh, another issue that comes up that is of significant impact on, on rural Vermont uh, every, every two years or every year in the legislature is Act 250. Uh, <laughs> And I know that you wrote about uh, Act 250, a potential overhaul uh, of Act 250 in this coming session of the legislature in the column you write for the standard. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about what might be um, on the legislature's plate for Act 250 in, in this term. Sure. Uh, my article references a bunch of recommendations from the Natural Resource uh, Board. And it is specific to on-farm commerce. So mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is Act 250 can be a very expensive permitting process. Mm -hmm. And our farmers really need help with diversification so that they can keep their the economics going on their farm, particularly those that are surrounding dairy farming, organic in particular. So... The, the board wanted to help with some, uh, first of all, there are some language concerns about, they say, you know, 51% of the product needs to be uh, by weight or volume. 
And it's very confusing when you're talking about an on-farm restaurant. Is 51% an aggregate throughout the whole year? So you just have to make sure that what goes on your plate equals 50 51% total or every plate that goes out in your restaurant has to have 51% mm -hmm. of its weight or volume on the plate. So th what they're trying to do is make those things clearer. They're trying to um, band farmers together so that if I grab eggplant from a nearby farm and I use my green beans and my beef, that counts together. Uh, not everything has to be grown on your farm, but by a Vermont farmer. Mm -hmm. So they think that's a very important um, you know, point in all of this as well. And uh, they're also talking about education. So they really want, if you want to do on-farm commerce, that the, uh, that the NRB, the Natural Resources Board, or the, you know, whoever decides to run this within the Act 250, will come to your farm and talk to you about what you want to do and help you have enough agricultural use so that you don't trigger Act 250. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, are you familiar with, um, uh, and I'm less familiar with it than I am with Act 250, but Act 143, which talks about um, uh, on, on farm businesses, and actually, it does, in, in fact, exempt a lot of on farm businesses from the 50% plus um, regulations, but it's, 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 has language problems of its own. So um, <laughs> it seems like there's some tweaking that needs to go on on, on the state. Of course, here in, uh, here in the Woodstock area, uh, the, the most recent and some would say controversial example of this kind of interplay uh, between the NRB and government and, and the private and agricultural sector is Peacefield Farm. That's right. Uh, and that's engendered a lot of this discussion about on-farm on restaurants. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I think you referenced this in your article in the standard as well, um, local zoning regulations still uh, are going to be in effect, right? Correctly, uh, correct in, in terms of, of really regulating these kinds of on-farm businesses at the local level. Much of it still falls to the local regulators. Is that correct? That is correct. And none of the recommendations from the Natural Resources Board uh, were put in place to restrict municipalities in any way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And are there any other aspects of Act 250 that you and your fellow legislators might be taking a look at this session that you're aware of? It's a great question. Most of it has to do with housing. Mm -hmm. uh, they really want to focus our resources on removing Act 250 exemption from downtown designated villages or mm -hmm. uh, centers. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is keep the natural landscape natural and beautiful and concentrate mm -hmm. development where it already is. And that means providing the opportunity for uh, there to be less regulation in a building that's already used for many apartments. You know, if you do a substantial amount of renovation, you can trigger Act 250. If you have five units in one building and you're a developer that just bought another building and are still trying and trying to make another five units, even though they are already units, you're still triggering Act 250 mm -hmm. because there are laws about how many within a certain mile radius. So right. that's exactly. mostly, yeah, that's yeah. mostly what yeah. they're working on it, because it also reduces the cost of housing. You know, I, if Rainbow Play School had to do its job of Act 250 from, from scratch, no, it didn't because they did it in the 90s uh, when they made it a school back then. Uh -huh. So I only had to do a small amendment, but that permit would have been substantial enough just with, it was around $50,000 mm -hmm. that we would have had to pay Act 250 alone. That doesn't include our fire safety permit and our, for general construction right. and then permits for electrical and plumbing and sprinkler pipes. So we had to get all of those permits in advance before they would let us close on the building. Mm -hmm. And we would have gambled with a significant amount of money. So I think there's work to be done on, on helping small businesses and nonprofits and child cares um, get through the process from a financial perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is, this is an issue that I, in, in speaking to people, uh, small business people, small farmers, um, uh, 
rural people of, of you know, limited financial means who have had to go through the Act 250 process. In some instances, they've given up because of, yes. the, of the cost. And they would argue, they argue that it's the, it's the large scale developers, the very well healed people who can afford to navigate and get through and ultimately come out with what they want of the Act 250 process. But it's the people of limited means that, that um, are, are, are really put at a disadvantage by it. So um, I agree. And we, if economic development is, is craving more business and more people to move here. Mm -hmm. And if we could work on either an enterprise fund, if you are below a certain level of business, or if you're deemed small or a nonprofit childcare, or work on a loan fund mm -hmm. um, that could be, you know, a replenishing source of income to reduce the overall cost of Act 250. That's the kind of work that I would like to do in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not what I wanted to walk in as a freshman and immediately start because there's so much for us to learn. Mm -hmm. I uh, So what, right, right now I'm building my relationships to go around and exactly. to see who who has done this before me because it's I'm going to be better and more effective if I work with someone who has more experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's let's end on that note. Um, uh, as you continue to gain experience, it'll be it'll be uh, very informative to share with our readers, to share your wisdom and your experiences with our with our uh, viewers and with the readers of the standard. And I look forward to touching base with you again uh, next week and each and every week to come uh, as this legislative session continues. Thanks so much, Tasha. Thank you, Tom. Great to be here.